I'm Shannon Miller with yes. the Miller Other Law Firm. And I'm Star Bradbury with Senior Living Strategies. And today we're talking about guardianship, which has been in the news a lot, yeah. um, mostly negative, but I'd like to talk about when guardianship is a positive thing and worth uh, seeking for somebody in your family or that you're concerned about. So when would you, as an elder law attorney, advise uh, guardianship? As a guardianship attorney, and I think I speak for most of the guardianship attorneys across the state of Florida, we don't want guardianships. <laughs> that, and I've heard that, and I tell, I tell my clients That's too, right. you won't find an elder law attorney <laughs> who will tell you to go through guardianship right. because it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. And, and that's assuming you have someone you can trust to be a guardian, yeah. <laughs> right? It's hard. Uh -huh. It's so a long we, process. We like people to do advanced planning by setting up things like durable powers of attorney mm -hmm. or a trust-based plan where you have a provision that allows for someone to manage your finances for you, who you trust and know, usually a family member, um, and then that person takes on that role if you become incapacitated. That is the best of all right. scenarios. So avoiding guardianship because you've pre-planned and you've put these legal documents in place through an attorney. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if that happens and one of the people that you trusted ends up taking advantage of that trust mm -hmm. and really creating an exploitation, um, which and unfortunately happens, happens mm -hmm. quite frequently, we sometimes have no choice but to try and set up a guardianship in order to stop the exploitation from occurring. And that's when you would say, there's no other way around. Right. We're going to have to pursue this. Yeah. Now, I remember from some of the research I did that in Florida, is it still this way? Is there guardianship of the person and guardianship of the property? That's correct. Can you explain that a little bit? So guardianship of the property is just, to, just what it says, manage your finances, mm -hmm. sue mm -hmm. people, um, pay your bills, mm -hmm. um, making sure that you know your needs are met with right. Social Security, making sure your retirement assets are managed properly. All of those things would be things that the guardian of the property would manage. The guardian of the person is just that they handle your person. You know, where do you live? Mm -hmm. um, who are the people that you want to visit with socially? Right. Um, what's your medical needs? What they're going to oversee that aspect Correct. of your life, not mm -hmm. necessarily the finances and the property. Sometimes is it all? Is it some, one and the same, or is it it's all usually two one, people? Yeah, it's usually one person. And then if you're that guardian, aren't you required to report into the court? You are. Isn't it strict? It's very you strict. To, you have to account for every nickel. Every nickel. Yeah. So that's that's why it's a lot to take on, and you wouldn't pursue that unless you absolutely. Yeah, right. And so, it's no fun because, you know, a judge is making decisions about your finances. That's right. And usually a family member is always going to do a better job at that, you know, because they understand, you know. But what if you're what we what we, I call a solo ager, mm -hmm. and you really, um, and this is a problem for people. Yes. You know, the, uh, for many years people say, well, I don't have any children. Who am I going to count on? And I would always joke, there's lots of people who have children who can't count on them either. So this is becoming an increasing issue, an increasing problem. If you were giving advice to someone who really felt that they had no one at all, yeah. what steps exactly could they take to ensure that if they had dementia or something happened cognitively, mm -hmm. that they're someone that can trust is going to be help, there to help them? Yeah. What would you say? I would say, and I do, I say this a lot because I have a lot of people coming in and doing their estate planning and then they will say to us, I don't have a helper. Right. Establish helpers. Mm -hmm. So it's okay if you have a helper who's the same age as you. Ideally, we'd have a few people in a list <laughs> and then you would establish relationships with them and say, hey, if you need a helper, I'll be your helper. If you can be my helper, if I need a helper. Um, and then to really kind of make sure that that person stays in that role of helper with you, right. that they understand right. what you would want to happen if you became incapacitated, what you would want to happen at the end of your life, end of life decision making. And also, you know, really making sure that you trust this person. Are they a convicted felon? It's not a bad question. A, right. They no. won't be able to serve as your guardian if they are. And they really, you really might not want to put them in charge of your money if they are either. Um, there are certain things that you might want to ask somebody. You might want to just dive a little bit into, you know, have they done something like this before? Mm -hmm. How comfortable are they mm -hmm. with keeping track of their billing? Um, do they have good finances themselves? Um, but also people, you can use professionals. You can use a CPA. Just, or, yes, I was just going to say, because the need is so great, I think we're going to see over the next few years a real increase in people 
professionals right. being willing to take on that role. Um, yeah. I'm an aging life care specialist with the National Aging Life Care Association, and there's different levels within that association. And some of these professionals that are certified care managers, um, mm -hmm. were, they're willing to take on a fiduciary role mm -hmm. or a, a guardianship type of role without necessarily being a guardian right. um, to help you should you become incapacitated. And the time to develop those relationships, I tell my clients, is ahead of the yes. need. You don't want to wait till you've been diagnosed with dementia right. or until you're incapacitated for some other reason. Right. You want to build those relationships early and find someone who you trust and who's willing to take on that role. And there are, there are people out there. Um, and if you need help finding them, ask Shannon or ask me. <laughs> Happy to help.